Welcome, time for some art fun. Today, we're going to work on my challenge to myself for this year, which is portraits. So stick around. In my video about my 2023 art goals for the year, I focused on how I would like to improve my portrait work. Also my landscape work, but portraits are a number one challenge for me. I've started working on them. You will have seen them in some of my sketchbooks from last year. And I just really wanna keep improving and keep pushing myself and keep challenging myself. So with portraits, I always try to pick really a close up shot of the face, usually a little bit of the neck and shoulders perhaps, and some hair to work with. And I really challenge myself to try to make it very recognizable that it is a face and that it's a somewhat realistic face, although I am not in any way, shape or form going for photo realism. And so just know that's kind of the approach I'm taking. I'd like to get my proportions generally correct. I'd like to get, you know, the eyes to look like eyes and the lips to look like lips and things like that. Um, but I just want it to overall look good at the end and good in my eyes, something that I'm happy looking at, something that I'm proud to look at. And so with this portrait, I'm working in my sketchbook, which is a watercolor sketchbook with my Regina's watercolors, which I'm trying to use up. That's my first palette of the year that I'm really trying to use to the fullest. And I'm just using this very clean, cool red, which is like a pink to do the basic first layer to just get some of the shadows down. And then I'll start working in more flesh tones to build up that skin tone. This particular portrait, normally you'll know, I usually work off of the free reference website Pexels or Pixabay. And there's another one like Up something. I can never remember what it is, like Up Safe or something like that. I don't know. But there are a bunch of them, <laughs> a bunch of free reference websites where I usually pull my portraits. But I really wanted to be inspired. And I've painted this artist before. This is Queen Herbie. I'm going to put the spelling up on the screen. I've drawn her for... October, I'm sorry, Inktober <laughs> a couple of years ago. And I can put that picture up here too so you can see what it looked like the first time that I drew her. And that one was just for Inktober. So it obviously wasn't a painting. It was just an ink drawing. And this one is based off of the cover for her LP or EP. I don't know what you call it. Um, for BDE, that is the name of this song. And she's just so stunning in this whole video. I watched this video and I'm just like, this woman is gorgeous. Like, I don't understand how she's so beautiful. And I love her bone structure. I love her eyes. She's just beautiful. And her voice is fabulous. She's a great singer. She's a great rapper. And her songs are just very fun. And she's really smart with how she puts lyrics together, but it is still just fun rap music. And she's so unique. So I just really love her music. I love listening to it when I'm walking my dog. It might not be for everyone. It is certainly not like a fun kid friendly type thing most of the time. Uh, so I know my art is very family friendly. This is rap music. So there are words that perhaps are not bearing a repeating in front of small children, but not too many. Frankly, it's really not that bad. It's not like a lot of music out there today. It's not like that. It's just really fun. Like I just love her raps. They're so cool. She has a song called Vitamins, um, talking about like doing her yoga and eating her vegetables and stuff. <laughs> I love that song. Vitamins just gets me going. It's so happy and it's so upbeat. And then she also has a song, Wifey. That was actually the first song I ever heard uh, from her. It was in that show Ozark on, I can't remember if it's Ozark or Ozarks on Netflix. And the daughter in that show was playing this song in one of her videos. And I loved it just from the small clip of it in that episode so much that I was Googling left and right, what is that song that Charlotte's playing when she's sad, an episode whatever of Ozarks. And that's how I found Queen Herbie, listened to Wifey, and then just started devouring all of her music. So I'm really inspired by her and inspired by this particular shot of her. And I just am obviously using it loosely. I don't do, again, photorealism, but I do try to use that picture as just a base for figuring out proportions and trying to do my interpretation of this artist. And using someone like that, of course, I was listening to her music while I was painting this, um, really kept me interested and kept me engaged. The main problem when I'm trying to paint someone I actually am aware of or recognize as opposed to just some, you know, bare bones model, like a stranger face on Pexels or Pixabay is I know what she looks like. 
which means I know she doesn't look exactly like this. But my goal when painting someone isn't to actually make it look exactly like them. Again, it's a painting. I'm not trying to render a photo. So I'm trying to go with the flow and my painting process is very much like get the proportions down, figure out where the shadows are, and then just follow whatever is happening on the page and let it happen. So that's definitely what I did here. I still think it's probably something she might recognize and say, oh, someone was trying to, you know, paint me. It doesn't look exactly like me, but I can see that's what they were trying to do. But I'm just really enjoying my portrait process and trying not to put too much pressure on myself. The eyes are definitely the hardest thing for me. Um, hair, I've kind of let go and let loose and not put myself in a box of trying to do every single strand. This is just the first layer of the hair you're seeing here. I do go back and do more layers. But the eyes are always so stressful for me because if you get something weird on the eyes, the whole face is going to look so wrong. And I've talked about that before with my animal art, where once you have cute eyes, the animal's going to be cute. It's like not a problem. <laughs> You could literally just draw a circle, give it cute eyes, and people would recognize it as a cute animal. They would just figure out what animal they think it is. Like, they'd be like, oh, what a cute seal face, or what a cute gerbil face, or oh my gosh, what a funny little round dog head. I don't know why it's so round. Like, literally, you could just invent whatever animal it is if you see cute eyes. Um, same thing with humans. If you put good, recognizable eyes on a shape, people are going to think you're trying to draw a human. But if you mess up the eyes, the face will never look right. And I'm so conscious of that, that I tend to put a lot of pressure on myself when I come to the eyes. And so I just leave them till very close to the end, as you can see here. <laughs> I don't know why I do that, because frankly, then I've already put in all this time. I've seen a lot of artists do the eyes first, and that's what I do with animals. So watching this back, I'm kind of baffled at why I left the eyes till the end of the first round of paint. Because I tend to go into a flow state if I'm painting, like a painting like this where I'm sitting down and enjoying myself, I don't have a conscious plan other than starting with the first round of shadows. At that point, it's all bets are off. It's willy nilly. It's like wild, wild west. So I actually didn't even realize until watching this footage back that I leave the eyes for the very end. But thinking back, that is exactly what I do. I do that all the time. And it's so funny because maybe I'm wasting my time. Like maybe I would just abandon a painting if the eyes came out weird or wrong. So I don't know, maybe that's a good thing then that I leave it to the end. So I'm not just abandoning paintings and have like one third finished paintings left and right all over my sketchbook. I don't know. But I was very happy with this. I, again, I know that it doesn't look like Queen Herbie in this photo. I, it's probably, it's like, I don't know, it's in the family, I guess, but it doesn't look like her. She has a very distinct look. And this is clearly based on or inspired by her, but it's not her. And I don't know about you, but when I'm doing portraits, I don't care. That's not part of my goal. My goal for this year is to make portraits that I like looking at and that look good. So that when I look at them or if I post them on Instagram or if I'm flipping to that page in my sketchbook tour, I'm proud to show that page the same way I'm proud to show like my guinea pig page or my bird page or my dog page or my seal page or whatever. I'm really proud of my cute animals, but with my portraits, I tend to get very nervous. Um, I don't know if you saw there, by the way, I accidentally flicked paint all over my painting and had to remove it with the tissue, but that's why I love watercolor because it is pretty easy to lift on watercolor paper, especially Regina's watercolors, they lift beautifully. Um, but that's what I feel about this painting. I'm proud to show this painting. It's not done yet, but it's getting there. And I was really excited about this product. When I posted it on Instagram, I got comments like, wow, your portrait is really, your portrait work is really coming along. Like we can see the improvement, how cool to be able to see that. And that's what I'm going for. So I'm going to continue sharing my portrait work on this channel, even though it's not cute. It's not like on brand for my cute art, but it is my art and it's something I'm working on. And my portrait work has always been a lot more sober and serious than my animals. <laughs> I don't know why, but I do kind of like this sort of serious, straightforward drama in my portrait work. And so you're going to see some of that as I'm working on this this year. And I hope you really like it. I'm really proud of how this came out. Um, I don't know why the light was being so weird here. I left this footage in, even though the light keeps adjusting, like it doesn't know where to focus. 
but I thought it was really funny and interesting, so I left it in anyway, because look how crazy the eyes look here. <laughs> it was just cracking me up, so I thought you might enjoy it. <laughs> but I, it, it gets better. It gets better. I just left this in so you could see how like creepy and weird the pupils were looking when all it wanted to do was focus on the pupils. But I'm just doing my final round of touch-ups here, and I had a blast painting this. I had a blast listening to Queen Herbie while I was painting it. I had a blast thinking about like imagining with my little teeny tiny itsy bitsy channel if Queen Herbie were actually to see this and what she would think of this painting. I thought she was stunning in that video, the whole video, just like one of the most beautiful women I've ever seen in my life. And I was really happy to memorialize that beauty in my sketchbook. So I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please check if you're subscribed. If you're not, I would so appreciate it if you would subscribe to the channel. It really helps. Leave me a comment with anything that you're working on this year as far as trying to improve any particular subject matter or maybe material that you're working with. And go ahead and leave me a like if you enjoyed the video. Until next time, remember, create something cute. <laughs>